should be in their care. Joining us to talk about this this morning is a public affairs analyst, Ziggy Ibe. A very good morning to you and thanks for joining uh, the LUFM Morning Show. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. All right, uh, let's let's talk about this real quick. So the federal government is now, uh, you know, moving the responsibility to take care of inmates in, across uh, correctional facilities in the country, uh, saying that, you know, they've been spending 22 billion naira to feed inmates in all the custodial centers across the country, and they can no longer do that. They need the state governments to now play a role in that uh, a particular uh, in this matter what what what's your take on this one please can you repeat that i hardly heard you okay can you hear me clearly now okay better mm -hmm, fantastic all right so um we're talking about this move by the federal government uh, you know and the minister of interior rauf aregbeshola yesterday said he first lamented that the congestion of custodial centers are taking a toll on the finances of the federal government. And so he said the state government should now play their part, take care of the over 90% of inmates in custodial centers uh, who they have arrested and are prosecuting. What's your take on this? Hello? Ziggy, can, are you there? Okay, um, network, the glitch here is, is high. Network is very uh, low here. All right. You know what we'll do? We'll just, uh, you know, reconnect with you in a moment and see uh, if we can establish a fine one and not have uh, such glitch. But that's that with that. Uh, you can join the conversation, by the way. Let's know what you make of uh, this. That's the uh, focus this morning alongside uh, some of the topics. But I uh, will begin with this. We started on that note already. So join the conversation 0703 and 909 Those are the numbers to call. You can also send in WhatsApp messages via those numbers. Did we mention that we're streaming on Facebook? You can join the conversation there. And if you'd like to jump on this conversation, the members of the Benue State House of Assembly have suspended sitting over the non-payment of their six-month salary arrears and allowances. That's another one, right? And uh, you do know that the governor, the outgoing governor, uh, Samuel Tom, did send them a bail to approve the controversial executive pension bill, which would give, uh, you know, uh, some goodies to former governors one is to provide them permanent accommodation and four new cars every four years you know for former governors and the bill uh by the way just to mention has crossed its past first reading already uh, and uh it also proposes the hiring of six personal staff of former governors and three for former deputy governors. While well, we uh, try to establish connections with, uh, uh, re-establish connection with a guest, we'd like you to join the conversation and let's get talking about this. Let's even talk about uh, this, uh, you know, bill, this move by the Benue State Governor uh, to do this. As we do that, uh, we have back on the line uh, guest analyst for the morning, Ziggy Ibe. Good morning to you again, Ziggy. Good, 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 good morning. I'm sorry for for the for the network issue. That's yeah. okay. Thank you so much for staying with us. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yeah, so our first story for the morning is uh, the move by the federal government to shift uh, the care for correctional or for inmates in correctional facilities across the country to state governors they've said they've spent or they spend 22.44 billion naira, you know to feed inmates and they want the state governors to do to take responsibility what's your take on this uh, okay one thing i know too well is this we have um, the state of um, um, the responsibility of our leaders is what matters uh, so high and uh, well here. Those who are at the correctional centers uh, deserve the best. Uh, the best might not be the kind of um, uh, leverage or the kind of uh, standard we, the, those who are at the freedom, have, but a kind of measure that will give them that responsibility 
that um, assurance that uh, they are being kept in a place that uh, would correct the whatever anomalies that uh, made them come there. Because it is all about uh, it is all about um, rehabilitation. It's all about uh, bringing people to the knowledge that look what you did was wrong, so it can be um, corrected if certain measures are taken. And uh, these are the areas the leaders or the government should look at that these are human beings and they needed to be taken care of. Okay. Mm. Um, knowing this, uh, there are certain uh, comforts they must enjoy as human beings. What that means to me is that uh, they must be provided for uh, a, a, a kind of uh, they must be provided for enough to take care of their well-being, enough to take care of what they can uh, uh, the leverage they can attain, so that when they are readmitted into the society they will be a better person. They would uh, become a, a good people. Okay? Because the whole essence of taking them in there is to correct them. Is mm. to correct mm. their, 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 the kind of life they were living before. Whatever error that made them go there will be corrected. We, we assume it was uh, an infraction on the living of the people that caused them to go there. Otherwise, they would have been in the mix of what is doing here. But because the 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 the, the, the wrong foul of the law, whichever reason it is, uh, they are taking them for correction. That means you wouldn't deny them certain measures of uh, livelihood. Mm. So, if such amount is projected for their well-being, for keeping them safe enough to be fully integrated when uh, they are. Their service years are over. Well, uh, I think it's well. But then, my worry and the worry of many of us is that will that money really uh, get to them? Will that money or they will that uh, such will such finance get to them? Are you are you? It will be used for the people uh, it was budgeted for, mm. and that is what have, we have. Um, we've heard or we've seen over the years where budgets are made where certain amount of money are brought out or are being budgeted and uh, yes you will not get to the right people for which that money was uh, made out are, are you are you saying ziggy are you you know are, are you saying that it is possible that this 22 billionaire as mentioned by the minister of interior Ralph Aragbeshala yesterday uh, which he says they used to feed inmates across 244 correctional facilities may not have reached the inmates oh, we, we have this um, we have this history and the history of budget in Nigeria has never been um, such um, a good one how do I mean um, so many um but as status of um, uh, outlets have been uh, have been budgeted for, or certain uh, infrastructure have been budgeted for. But uh, before the money gets to their hands, it will be edited by those that they talk. Meaning that uh, before it, before the real actual amount goes to their go to the place they are meant for, uh, those that they talk must have edited all the money, pre-cooled it such that it might not be enough again. I am not uh, saying uh, nothing goes to them, but it might not be enough. Hmm. It might not be enough because um, as an opportunity to, to visit so many of the facilities, uh, correctional facilities in Nigeria, and what you see, their meals are eyes off. Okay? Their meals are eyes off. And one will begin to uh, wonder, is this the kind of meal? Is that a plate of uh, food that we are told certain amounts we are budgeted for? Is that what we 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 we, we see being fed by by Nigerians to hmm. being fed by the leaders to these prisoners? Sometimes it's uh, doubtful. It's very doubtful. But ours is to keep drumming that support, drumming that uh, they are the rooftops. 
where we tell the government and those who are saddled with the responsibility that the moment a money, a particular amount of money is uh, set aside for the for a purpose, they should please make sure uh, that money is uh, utilized for the purpose for which it was uh, brought out. The issue is that money might not get to them. That is where the issue is. Otherwise, they are human beings like us. Uh, one circumstance or the other had made one um, found himself in such a situation. Some of them don't like the situation they find themselves. They don't. They don't like the situation they find themselves. And they were sometimes beaten by by, by situation, uh, by circumstances to it. Okay? So they, that not, they deserve our, our pity. Hmm. Yes, they deserve our pity. They are human beings who deserve a certain, certain level of uh, um, care. Okay? Hmm. Because uh, that is... Um, that will make it right. All right. When you want to reintegrate them into the society, they become better people. They become nice people. Mm. You understand? So if they are not well taken care of, they might come out worse off. Okay. They might come out uh, worse than they were people. <laughs> you All understand? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I look at it. Don't condemn in totality that a certain amount is budgeted. But mine is the worry that the money goes to the purpose for which it was budgeted. All right. Um, let's, uh, you know, go on this very short break. When we get back from this break, I uh, would we'll, uh, talk some more with you, Ziggy, and of course, uh, expand the conversation even further. Do stay tuned. Thank you. Business from where it is to where it should be. You are listening to Law FM 103.9. Don't touch that dial. For this Niger way we do so, say you know hold cash, no me say wahala deo, you won't send money to Male for Villa. Just use Momo. You want buy recharge card or data. Just use Momo. You want pay for market where you buy. Just use Momo. You fit to use Momo rough and things without cash. As long as you get Momo account, no cash, no wahala. And it ain't easy to open no. Just that star 671 hash to open Momo account. Set your pin. Transfer money from your bank account inside your Momo account. Make you fit the pay for anything. Send and receive money sharp sharp because life is simple with momo ah, finest babe <laughs> how do you do it my skin gives me the extra confidence to light up the room that's why i'm deliberate about how i nourish my skin i use a soap made with the right natural ingredients a soap which one a soap that contains shea butter and aloe vera turmeric and honey for a glowing skin Skin. Experience the new Joy Black Soap made with over seven natural ingredients that moisturize, restore, and repair your skin, giving you the confidence to be who you love to be. Joy, beauty my way. When you listen to this station, you learn about your rights. You discover the law in ways you never imagined. You know why? You know why? Because we broad broadcast in your interest. It's a problem that we are all experiencing in the country. You know, different parts of the country, the same thing is happening. So, who do we call on to? Who do we hold responsible? We impact knowledge. If the grid is unable to shed the load that it ought to, it could also result in the collapse of, of the national grid. Call it what you may, but we are here to stay. The law was never biased, so why should it be now? To every individual, we are Law FM 103.9.
thanks for staying tuned. Uh, it's time to, you know, take your calls, contributions, and then uh, expand the conversation some more. You can join the conversation via WhatsApp 0703-227-7338 or 0909-555-1039. You can also drop a comment uh, via our Facebook or on that Facebook Live broadcast going on right now. Uh, you can also call the numbers we've mentioned already or simply send or tweet at Loifem underscore radio would like to take your calls and contributions as we go on. Ziggy Ibe is our guest today. Still very much on the line. And we're talking this uh, correctional facility issue, right? The federal government has said we will no longer uh, be able to feed inmates across 244 244 correctional facilities in the country. They say they spend 20. 2 billion era, 22 billion era to feed inmates across 244 correctional facilities and that's uh, our very first focus for today well uh, the minister of interior yesterday did also reveal that over 4,000 inmates are in custody for being unable to pay fines of 1 million era and below and they'll make up that number of persons they need to feed you know with these 22 billion era so if these persons over 4,000 of them uh across 244 correctional centers uh you know they're able to pay these fines one million and below you know they won't maybe the federal government won't spend as much but they've said now that no way we're not taking responsibility for this anymore especially for states uh who you know do not have Questionable facilities. They will need to pay the federal government to take care of this inmate. So, um, Ziggy, let's let's uh, talk some more uh, just to establish that you are there. Um, hello, just say hello to us, okay? Ziggy, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. All right, fantastic. Okay, so uh, let's continue the conversation. We've got a few more questions for you. Yes. Uh, so, this. Hello, can you hear us? I'm here, yeah. All right, beautiful. So now the Minister of Interior has said that um, state governments, you know, have to now take, you know, over uh, correctional facilities because of this recent amendment uh, in our constitution, removing issues with dealing with correctional uh, facilities to the, S I mean, um, concurrent list, meaning that both the federal government and the state governments now have to, you know, um, administer issues of that nature. Um, moving forward, do you think that if state government starts building, you know, their own correctional facilities, that would, in a way, affect um, the uh, correctional activities or the uh, issues relating to correcting people who have been taken to the correctional facility? Because in the first place, we know that the prison or the correctional facilities to rehabilitate, is to reorientate um, people who are in these places. Do you think that that would even affect anything? Um, we, we are talking about care of certain people here. And um, doing so demands um, um, a very large uh, uh, duty on the people shadowed with this responsibility. Um, before now, federal government has been, uh, has been at, the, at, the, at the helm of this. Mm. Now, if the state government is uh, being co-opted into it, that would uh, drag further the, the, the care net mm. of these people. So they will be further taken care of and uh, they are need as it is evidently is, will be will be assessed by the by the level of uh, um air that is coming to them. Mm. Um, Ziggy, Ziggy, I, I guess what the federal government is saying is, well, ninety percent of these inmates are being prosecuted. They've been arrested and they are being prosecuted by the state government. So they don't want to take responsibility anymore. So it's not like they are going to expand the care net, like you've mentioned. But it's going to be that the state government will solely take responsibility. I suppose that's what the minister meant. Now, um, let me establish what, where I'm going. Okay. I think when the issue of inmate comes up, mm. you know, Certain individuals are being held by the state. Yeah. And uh, 
the moment they are convicted, they become the national property, they become federal property because their care will certainly will be coming from the federal uh, angle now. Okay? Hmm. And uh, if, if, if the federal government is saying um, we might not be able to drag the care of these people this far, the state should be able to advocate their, 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 their judgment, their, their, their cases. They should be able to do their cases timely such that if anyone is guilty of uh, a, a particular uh, infraction, then he will be, he will be sent to, to, to the correctional center. Then those who, are, who will be left because uh, they are found spotless, they are not found guilty, should be let go. I think the federal government, in a way, is trying to tell the state government that, uh, look, the earlier you educate their cases, the better. So that you don't bring in enormous uh, uh, responsibilities on us. Mm. Okay? And uh, that goes to tell us the lopsided nature of our judicial system, both on the state and on the federal. Cases are never adjudicated on time. Sometimes you will find out why you can't reason why cases are being dragged this long. When uh, the current uh, VP was uh, in Lagos State as a uh, attorney general, he, the cases in Lagos were, were, were never dragged. Still, with these cases are agitated, okay, and the, the victim or the, the, the person, the offender, was his or her case. But we found out that when he went back to party school, even in Lagos here, cases are being dragged years and years and years and years. And sometimes you find out why you can't find out why certain cases are being dragged that way. And it goes back to um, how bad our judicial system is. People are not done on time, where offenders are not being punished on time. Sometimes their cases are left unattended to a very long time. And that's where the college comes that um, when uh, cases are dragged too long, the, the, the the justices might be denied. Hmm. Go to certain areas, uh, certain correctional centers in Nigeria here, you find that so many cases, and so many individuals have not even been taken to court. They are on our way. Hmm. trials in Nigeria can be perennial. They might be many years without... Uh, and this is so bad in our judicial uh, jurisprudence. Very bad. Hmm. Um, I, I, I wish a lawyer could speak uh, to this uh, to this issue. And reasons why certain cases are being dragged. Okay, if the government is saying they are spending over twenty two billion naira on um, on um, on inmates, that tells you that certain people who are supposed to be left off the hook, we are not. They are being certain uh, uh, cases and certain deals are being brought upon them because their cases have dragged so many years mm. without uh, agitation. Yeah. Their issues have been dragged so many years without attending to. Some of these people don't even have lawyers. They have no access to uh, uh, legal uh, practitioners who will look at their cases mm. in the law court. Guess and what? These are, these are issues. Yeah. A whole lot of issues. Yeah, Ziggy, the Chief Justice of Nigeria was there that uh, event where the minister of interior spoke and he did say that a few things as regards this you know the uh, side of justice and he said i'll quote directly the law should be interpreted the way it should be and must be done with the fear of the almighty god a visit to the custodial centers should also be increased with a view to setting free those inmates with uh, minor offenses and those that ought not to be there in the first place he goes on to say, I passionately appeal to judicial officers and those directly and remotely connected to the administration of justice, uh, of the justice chain in the country to distance themselves from primordial sentiment and disposition. End of quotes. That's the Chief Justice or the statement by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Ulu Kayade Arewola, yesterday yes. at that event. Okay, but do, do, you know, do you know where I have grounds with certain, uh, some of these people who come to speak so much uh, English? without uh, uh, practicality. And 
I listened to a program this morning where certain uh, where some in, uh, some some lawyers said they offer cases on pro bono basis. Hmm. Okay, if we had lawyers who offer uh, their their services on pro bono basis, can they reach for these people certain uh, offenders who can afford the services of lawyers, who can afford the services of legal practitioners? Because if you if you dig deep into in all this, some individuals, some offenders who are there today are there because they have no they don't have that world without they don't have that financial uh, uh, leverage to, to, to pursue their cases okay and that's worth the number of uh, of inmates because at the end if the person couldn't uh, afford the money to, to, to get a lawyer he will be thrown into gala mm. and it becomes uh, it becomes a responsibility on the government mm. i wish the government will look into this deeply All and right. practically okay so that if the uh, people offenders who who are there, who have no access to legal practitioners, who have no access to, to, to lawyers because of the paucity of cash uh, uh, they witness, will be helped. Because such cases, as it is, are very minor that they don't even need conviction. Mm. Some is just a little punishment. In South Africa, some cases I've seen, some offenders I see, are just being being uh, punished to sweep uh pleasure so it's a sweet uh, mm-hmm. street uh, okay is as minor as that those are cor- correctional measures okay some of these measures are not necessarily to punish them it's just to correct their mm-hmm. orientation mm-hmm. okay then some are put into classes some are offered uh, education some are giving a uh, um, um, um some are offered um, uh, vocational uh, education yeah. to, to be able to engage their brain. So it's not okay? it's not everybody but, we need to but, send but, to the no, centers. No, no, not everybody. You don't send everybody to jail. No, absolutely. But here, everybody is locked up. Mm. Everybody is, is just seen as a, as a, a first-time offender and mm. uh, is just funny heavily. Okay? Right. Some cases some cases need to be defined and then there might there might be classes of offense. You know, for which the school are meant to start. Okay, you don't bring in somebody who stole uh, 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 money in the in the in the in the, in the market to someone who killed. But in Nigeria, you see how these people are lo- they they are brought together and they are jailed and kept in the same place. All right. Okay, Ziggy, we, we need to move very fast. Um, we've got one more question for you. Beg that you, you know, very quickly respond to this uh, because we need to close this session real quick. Yeah, so uh, we are still trying to look for solutions towards this. You have said that um, not everybody needs to go to the prison. Absolutely, we agree with you on that. What other further um, correctional, you know, correctional punishment you feel that can be given? Of course, temple can be allowed to pay fines, but Perhaps you want to tell Nigerians what other solutions you think can be done to decongest you know, our prison facilities. Sorry, I didn't get to Solutions to decongesting our prison facilities. You know, you have solution mentioned the fact solution that solution not everybody would have to go to prison. So solution is timeless education of their cases. Timeless. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ad- education of their cases. That's one. Then classification of offenses. Hmm. Let's begin to see lower offenses. Let's begin to see middle, uh, middle uh, access offenses. Let's begin to see the highest offense. Okay? Look, why is this place termed the correctional center? Hmm. It is because their brain, their ways of doing things, we are not corrected at initial. And when they are brought in here, they are meant to be corrected. Orientations have to be given. Do you know that certain people only giving them um, uh, uh, information or teaching them in the class to correct their, their normalities. Yes. Okay. And you begin to develop their brain. You develop their, their, their psychology. You work on their, on their brain. That class is the, the, the creation. Class in the sense that cases that, that, that needed um, urgent um, attention should not be delayed. Mm. In Nigeria, we delay cases so much. All right. are being delayed. And that's what brings about um, quest, measure, 
that's what I bring about uh, issues to the federal government today that are shouting they are no longer having money to train uh, uh, to, to feed the uh, inmates. So we have so many ways to, to correct and reduce the number of inmates in Nigeria. Then another thing is every year a governor and uh, so many leaders in so many commissions have the right to go to business facilities and give leniency. I know of that. It mm. happens in other countries of the world. Okay? I think and that's then, been practiced, yes. Yes. Then another thing which so many governors have refused to do is to sign that water. So many inmates that need to, to get off uh, the, the system are, are still being there. They are still being kept because the laws of those states did not, um, the, the governors of those states refused to sign the death warrant of uh, uh, certain offenders. So it still, it still swells up it swells up the number of people that are being taken into into correctional system. Yeah. All right. Okay? Yeah. So it's about to trickle the numbers. There are so many people. There are those lawyers who say they, they offer their services on pro bono basis. To be able to go to correctional centers, mm -hmm. to be able to go to correctional facilities, and meet these people, and meet those who cases are not, then not those who they can offer their services on pro bono basis. Mm -hmm. Because that's the, the service of lawyer is, is, is key here. Yeah. Okay? Since they are gateway to getting offenders out of the dollar. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Ziggy eBay public affairs analyst for being a part of the conversation and joining uh, you know your voice uh, on this matter we appreciate it thank you so much it, it, it's my pleasure thank you and uh, 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 network couldn't allow us too much as you could have done sorry mm -hmm. about it, it's it's fine um thank you again uh, enjoy the rest of your friday okay uh thank that you, yeah that's it with uh, ziggy be, uh, you can join the conversation, of course. Uh, and while he was speaking in his closing remarks, I was just thinking, uh, pro bono, what's Councillor Felix doing in the studio? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we've, I've offered pro bono services. Oh, you have? To, yes, to a couple of people. In it? When I was in Abuja, I did a pro bono service for, mm. um, but not in, an inmate, but a, an arrested um, mm. uh, individual by the police. Cool. And I'm also involved. Uh, I don't want to talk about this, but yeah. <laughs> in uh, we visit um, police stations mm -hmm. that, um, if you ask in Lagos, you have Bayo Akinla, the former NBA chairman, Korodu. Uh, we do this program called um, uh, um, DSN, Duty Solicitors Network, where cool. we go to uh, police stations mm -hmm. and with the magistrates uh, to visit this police station. So, I mean, it's a regular thing that is being done in Lagos specifically. I also know uh, in Ibadan, Ibadan is also trying to bring that up at those states. So, it's um, it's a gradual thing and I'm sure that in due time we'll get to the level where people who do not even have a reason to be in the police station and in the prison uh, c facilities do not find themselves in those places. Alrighty. Uh, that's that with our story. Of course, join the conversation. Let's uh, get your thoughts on this. And uh, we'll now switch gears as we do so. Take your calls alongside uh, to the next conversation for the morning. And that is also something very vital, right? Uh, this time we'll be talking about uh, the media and regulation uh, in general. Uh, well, just uh, on, that was on Wednesday. The Federal mm. High Court in Abuja give an order of perpetual injunction. Council Felix will do a, a little breaking, uh, a breakdown rather, as we get start in a moment. But the Federal High Court in Abuja gave an order of perpetual injunction restraining the National Broadcasting Commission from imposing fines on broadcast stations. The Incorporated Trustees of Media Rights Agenda had in an originating motion uh, sued the regulator that uh, the National Broadcasting Commission uh, saw respondents in the suit. Ruling uh, on Wednesday, the court also set aside the 500,000 naira imposed on the 1st of March 2019 on each of the 45 broadcast stations. Justice James Amatosho held that the NBC not being a court of law, had no powers to 
impose sanctions as punishment on broadcast stations. Right. Um, just before we connect with our guest and uh, let him talk about this very quickly, uh, let's break things down a little bit more. I mean, what Law FM 103.9, uh, the country's premier law radio station. So we'll help you understand some of these things a little bit more. So, uh, Councilor Felix, real quick, what's perpetual injunction? How does that work? Yeah, so first, we need to first understand what an injunction is. So basically, an injunction could it just basically means um, stopping somebody from doing something. So if, for instance, I find out that my right is about to be breached, somebody is about to infringe on my right, somebody is about to do something against my right, the best thing for me to do is to go to court and then get, you know, seek the court order to forestall that person from you know infringing on my rights so you could have different types of injunction an injunction could be uh, perpetual it could be mandatory it could be um, it could be interlocutory it could be uh, the different types of them so just as the name just as the name implies when you say something is perpetual it means that <laughs> it's almost like you are restraining the person till eternity mm -hmm. that's like the implication uh of a perpetual injunction but if it is uh i mean interlocutory it means that it is uh usually during appeal mm. maybe judgment has been given and you are now saying court should hold on just like you have in the case of um, this current case of um uh let me just give an example judgment has been given you are now appealing uh, you are saying court hold on um, on the judgment that has been given mm. don't execute till the determination of the appeal all right so there are different forms of it okay just to uh, give you that background information so you can understand this uh, better you don't know that lots of uh, broadcast stations have been fined over time by the national broadcasting commission and they there have been lots of media practitioners also think that uh, the the role of the national broadcasting commission shouldn't be limited to this well join us to talk about that this morning is a media development social transformation and environment expert uh, is uh, one who is uh, formerly with the bbc and i um, mean that's the bbc media action and former head of media development and external relations at bbc media action so you were talk talking to us about this this morning we're talking about aro leonard very good morning to you and thanks for joining the conversation good morning and um nice to be here today yeah thanks for staying on the line apologies we kept you for a bit uh we need to do some you know legal clarification as we go about that so yes on wednesday the federal high court in abuja gave that order of perpetual injunction restraining national broadcasting commission from imposing fines on broadcast stations going forward let's hear your thoughts on this i know that you're one of those who have advocated uh you know over time uh the role nbc should play in terms of regulating the media uh, how did you how did you receive or if you're just receiving how are you receiving this particular uh, you know injunction from the court? Well, it's it's good that it's happening, and um, unfortunately, it's something that should have happened since because um, broadcasters should have been able to take the NBC to court since and and get this sorted out. However, that code that empowers the NBC to do that mm. was actually put together not by the nbc but by broadcasters <laughs> that's the truth uh, what, what has happened over time was the fact that fines have been increased you know without the approval sort of of the broadcasters and that's where the confusion had been but the nbc code is not a document done by the nbc itself the nbc itself was even um, constituted or uh, made up of broadcasters yeah. Um, um, originally, the code is is um, put together by the NBC and broadcasters. So broadcasters get their input and they review it every couple of years, every four years or thereabout. So the code is actually due for review now. Mm. But however, with regards to these fines, and there are so many things around the fines that are not right. And that is why it, it becomes a problem. It doesn't mean that the broadcasters are, how will I call it, um, exempt from the, 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 the wrongdoings. No. The, the sanctions for me as a broadcaster and someone who trains broadcasters and who sets up radio and TV stations, 
if you check it, a lot of the stations that are being fined by the MBC are guilty from the biggest to the small smallest ones. They are guilty. None of them have been able to come out and prove that they are not guilty. Hmm. And the simple reason is because of lack of training. Um, there, are, there are certain ways in which you handle issues. Yes, you want to be truthful at all times. Yes, you want to state the fact at all times. But there are ways in which you can pass this information out that it won't cause a larger problem in the society. And that's the thing that is there. You as a broadcaster, you are the fourth estate of the realm. So, and the, the truth about it is that, uh, on, unfortunately, some broadcasters don't understand this. We are the strongest arm of the realm. We are stronger than the, the, the presidency, the judiciary, and the legislature. We determine, we are supposed to set the agenda. We are supposed to determine what those guys do. But we don't know our powers. So it's like this. So if you come out and you say something in a way that it could cause problems, you know, where there could be riots, there could be things like that, the, the slightest mistake, the smallest broadcaster does mm. can cause a major problem in the country. And that is what the MBC code is guarding against. Mm. It's not about saying you're not supposed to say the truth, you're not supposed to say the fact, but how do you say it? And that's where training comes in. So there are ways in which you creatively pass out the same information that is causing problems now in a way that is not going to cause problems. All right. So, 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 so yeah. yes, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, be, because we're pressed for time as well, we'd like to touch yeah. on as much uh, perspectives as possible. So, uh, in, in that court injunction, now Justice James Motoshaw was the one who sat on that matter. And he held that the National Broadcasting Commission, not being a court of law, had no power to impose sanctions as punishment on broadcast stations. He also said, you know, like you've mentioned, uh, he maintained that the NBC code, which gives the commission power to impose sanctions, is in conflict with Section 6 of the 1999 Constitution as amended that vested judicial powers uh, you know, in the court of law. Uh, and you've mentioned that, yes, broadcasters you know, go above board they in some way against these codes. Uh, are you saying that they are deserving of this imposed fines? And uh, also, you recall that in March 1, 2019, uh, the NBC had imposed 500,000 uh, each on 45 broadcast stations for alleged violation of its code. Is that really the rule? Certainly now that the court has ruled that, well, you don't have the right to impose fines. You cannot be a complainant and a judge at the same time, you know, in your own matter. What's your thought on this? That's why I said this should have come since. Now, get what I said. I did not say the stations are deserving of the fines. Okay. But in terms of sanctions, sanctions could be in so many ways. Mm. And and there are different ways the MBC can sanction stations. So many. Now, in terms of the rule... I'm, so, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I don't catch yeah. a line of thought. You want to mention some of those ways uh, stations can be sanctioned? So many. You can take a presenter off air. You could shut down like now this your show your show causes a problem we can shut down the station for these two hours there are so many ways in which you can do a lot of this and they could they they, they ban they've asked um, certain presenters to go register in the broadcast academy for training you know for um three months there are so many ways in which you could do these things but it seems like now it's just a revenue generating arm just mm -hmm. trying to generate funds for the government you know that's what it's it's been and at the NBC stakeholders forum in Abuja I did a presentation there in front of the NBC it was on national TV and I said even when you find a station that money should be flowed back into doing what the primary assignment of the NBC is. When you are talking about the role of the NBC, is to help build the media. The NBC is supposed to be the ones responsible for training. Has NBC been to your station to train you, apart from coming to talk about the code? No, the media goes way beyond that. The NBC is supposed to help with curricular developing students in the universities before they come out and help broadcast organizations with training. The NBC does not do that. So when you find somebody where does the money go, and I ended that presentation by saying, what is the use of a fine if someone makes a mistake? Now, you find all these guys now. Mm. 
but you don't train them. You don't show them how to do it well. Tomorrow they do a bigger one, and the whole station, um, I mean, the whole country scatters. I suppose. You I suppose you find the, the amount imposed would um, would automatically correct the, the presenter. How? <laughs> How? <laughs> now, part of the reason why the MBC increased the fines to that five hundred thousand naira was because politicians were taking advantage of it. They they come to the station, they drop the fine money, they drop the money for the airtime, and they go on air and say all sorts of things. And when the MBC sanctions the station, the station pays the fine. So what is there? Even if you make it five million, if someone wants to cause trouble, the person will pay that five million. So it is not it is not useful. Rather, what is useful is investing time and energy in training broadcasters so we prevent these problems. Now if mm. broadcasters are properly trained, politicians will not take advantage of them. And that is the role of the NBC. Well, uh, we, we do not have time, you know, to continue, but uh, we know that this is developing. Uh, so maybe the NBC would appeal this. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then this, this would come up again, uh, and we can revisit this, uh, have a conversation about this, and uh, get talking some more. But thank you so much uh, for being a part of the conversation. Aro Leonard is a media development, social transformation, and environmental expert. We appreciate your being on the show. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic uh, Friday. Uh, that's the package at this time. Absolutely. Well, thank you indeed for being there. We appreciate yes, it. Yes, I mean, it's it's Friday, so... <laughs> you sound like I, you have plans. I'm sure that <laughs> Beatrice has a lot of plans <laughs> lined up for both of us. Definitely. You don't know that I do have plans. She has also. plans lined up for both of us. Oh, yeah. For so yourself and myself no. or yourself and Kingsley? Both of us. But okay, we'll talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> okay, that that's nice. That's I mean, nice. it's Friday. We thank God it's Friday. And Absolutely. of course, another time for us to unwind and just distress on the week that was. Yes, so we're happy that we've gotten to the end of the week. This is uh, the final one for the week. We'll take a recess to return on Monday. Yes, God willing. Yeah. Allah, um, and unfortunately, it's the, it's the final one for Beatrice also. <laughs> um, well, not the final, final. Uh, and by that, I mean that she's moving on to good things. And of course, uh, it's going to be well, right? But on Love FM 103.9, uh, this will be the last time, right? Yes, of course, on the Love FM Morning Show. Sure. It's been a yeah. delight, like mm. to say the least. So, uh, a beautiful thing that it is that we were doing it and are doing and are still going to continue to do. And, of course, yes, uh, good to have been a part of the family. We Love wish you the very best. Uh, Absolutely. You are going when I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's yeah, fine. you're in great hands. I can tell you that for free. You're in great hands. So yeah, yes, yeah. I've cancer feelings on my side. Of course, mm. uh, the conversation show continues do follow at law fm underscore radio on twitter at law fm radio on instagram and join the facebook uh, you know fan page law fm 103.9 we'll be glad to have you as part of the family that's the package today kingsley bass is my name beatrice is my name and i am uzama felix we'll see Bye you next week now.